Devam Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraye Nasta Prayesu Abhadresu Nitam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Utamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki Vede Ramane Chaiva Purane Bharati Tata Hado Andiya Cha Mahadi Cha Hari Sabati Giyati Mokam Kalchiva Cha Lam Prangu Langrati Grim Yakripa Taham Bandi Sri Guru Dinatarine Paramananda Madhava Dhamo Prajitu Kaitabhuta Paramo Nimashram Satan Vedan Vashtavam Atravastun Sivadam Tapatayo Molanan Sima Bhagavate Mahamuni Kritengi Vai Para Iswarai Sadhyo Rudi Avarudvatre Trakritsukita Kishanam Negama Kapatalum Galitum Falam Sukamoka Dravasan Yutan Pi batam bagotam rasamalaya mahura ura sika bobi babuka ato yam brahmasu tranam barata ta venina yam gaya te basha rupo sho vidata paribrimita saba viditi asha nam saram saram paribrimita saba vidanta saram he sri bagota mischati tara samita shati prasya na yata shiarati kochi Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is the continuation of the reading of Sri Bhagavatam 10th Canto uh, chapter 2, text 28. The prayers by the demigods. So Lord Krishna has taken uh, residence in the womb of Mother Devaki. So it's in the womb of Deva Mother Devaki. So all the great personalities, the demigods, they are gathering within the room. And of course, they are incognito, you know, because the demigods are there, but you cannot see them if, you know, unless you have special eyes. But, you know, it's just like sometimes when Slapopa give lectures, it was sometimes, even though the audience may not be there, but Slapopa will say that, yes, all the demigods are also there listening. You may not be able to see them, but they are there. So those who have eyes can see. So the demigods, they have uh, uh, assembled in the room, which is the prison house of uh, Kamsa. So now they are praying to uh, Mother Devaki. Actually, they are praying to Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna is there within the womb. So they are making a prayer. So it's very, very significant prayer which they are making. So we are text number 28 now. Tuam Eka Ivasya Sataha Prasutis Tuam Sanidharan Tuam Anugrahas Cha Tuam Mayaya Sambrita Chetasa Tram Pasyanti Nana Na Vipaschito Ye Tameka Ivasya Sata Prasuti 
Tum sani dhanan tum manu grascha Tum ayaya sambrita cheta cheta sastwa Pashyanti nanana vipashito te ye Tum you O oh Lord, a car being one without a second, you are everything ever indeed. As she to her of this cosmic manifestation now visible, Prashuti the original source from your lordship sanidanam the conservation of all such energy when everything is annihilated from your lordship anugrahacha and the maintainer, Chat Mayaya, by your illusory external energy, Sambrita Cheta Saha, those whose intelligence is covered by such illusory energy, Tuam unto you, Pashanti. Observe, Nana, many varieties, Na, not, Vipaschita, learned scholars or devotees, Ye, who are, translation and purple by Zivine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki. The efficient cause of this material world manifested with its many varieties as the original tree is you, O Lord. You are also the maintainer of this material world and after annihilation, you are the one in whom everything is cons conserved. Those who are covered by your external energy cannot see you behind this manifestation, but theirs is not the vision of learned devotees. Purport. Various demigods, beginning from Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and even Vishnu are supposed to be the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of this material world, but actually they are not. The fact is that everything is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, manifested in varieties of energy. Brahma. There is no second existence. Those who are truly vipassit, learned, are those who have reached the platform of understanding and observing the Supreme Personality of Godhead in any condition of life. Preman jana chucharitan bhakti bilo chanena santa sadaya barida yesu bilo kanyanti. So this Brahma Samhita uh, 538. Learned devotees accept even conditions of distress as representing the presence of the Supreme Lord. When a devotee is in distress, he sees that the Lord has appeared as distress just to relieve or purify the devotee from the 
contamination of the material world. Why one is within this material world, one is in various conditions. And therefore, a devotee sees a condition of distress as but another feature of the Lord. Tate nukaka, tate nukampantum, susamik sha shanaham, shiksham nimadaha, Bhagavatam 10 This is a Lord Brahma said this. A devotee, therefore, regards distress as a great favor of the Lord because he understands that he is being cleansed of contamination. The appearance of distress as a negative, no, is a negative process intended to give the devotee relief from this material world, which is called mrityu samsara, or the constant repetition of birth and death. To save a surrendered soul from repeated birth and death, the Lord purifies him of contamination by offering him a little distress. This cannot be understood by a non-devotee, but a devotee can see this because he is vipaschit or learned. A non-devotee, therefore, he is perturbed in distress, but a devotee welcomes distress as another feature of the Lord. Sabam kalum idam brahma. A devotee can actually see that there is only the Supreme Personality of Godhead and no second entity. There is only the Lord who presents himself in different energies. Persons who are not in real knowledge think that Brahma is the creator, Vishnu the maintainer, and Shiva the annihilator, and that the different demigods are intended to fulfill diverse purposes. Thus, they create diverse purposes and worship various demigods to have these purposes fulfilled. Kamai Staishtan Rita Gyanam Prapadiyante and A devotee, however, knows that these various demigods are but different parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and that these parts need not be worshipped. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 9.23, Ye pyan ya debata bhakta, ya jante shodayam vitaha, tepi maam eba kunti ya, ya jante hiya vidipu bakam. Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods, O son of kunti, is really meant for me alone. But it is offered without true understanding. There is no need to worship the demigods, for this is avidi, not in order. Simply by surrendering oneself at the lotus feet of Krishna, one can completely discharge one's duties. There is no need to worship various deities or demigods. These various divinities are observed by the mudas, fools, who are bewildered by the different modes of material nature, tribi, gunamayi, bhavai, ebi, sabam, idam, jagat. Such fools cannot understand that the resource of everything is the supreme personality of Godhead. Moitan nabijanati, mam, ebiya, param, abriyam. 
not being disturbed by the Lord's various features, one should concentrate upon and worship the Supreme Lord, Maumikam Saranam Praja. This should be the guiding principle of one's life. Again, a tremendous year, Ganan Ganan Salakaya, Taxing Tajinetas, my Sri Grave Lama. Vanchakapatrubius Chakripa, Sundi Biba Chapati, Tanam, Pavana Biba, Vashna Biba, Namo Namaha, Nama Mambishna Padaya, Krishna Pistaya Bhutale, Shimati Bhaktivedanta Swami, Namine, Namasti Sasa Devi, Gauravani Pracharini, Nibis Sasa Nibari Pasita Pistari. Jaya. Tame kai basya sata prasutis Tuan sanidanam tuan anugrahascha Tamayaya samrita chetasastun Pasyanti nana Navipasito ye The efficient cause of this material world Manifested with its many varieties as the original tree is you, O oh Lord. You are also the maintainer of this material world, and after annihilation, you are the one in whom everything is conserved. Those who are covered by your external energy cannot see you beyond this manifestation, but theirs is not a vision of learned devotees. So the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and so many other great personalities, great sages like uh, Narada Muni, Vyasadev, Asita Devala, uh, Vashista, all the many, many great rishis. So the all in the, uh, in the, uh, prison house we are uh, Devaki and Basudev we are there imprisoned and Mother Devaki she's pregnant now with Lord Krishna in the womb so the demigods they come to uh, offer prayers so to the ordinary persons this may be like a contradiction that how come the Lord is inside someone's womb? Because the person whom all so many universes, they are coming from the pores of his body. So many universes are coming out of his body in his, in his form of uh, uh, Mah uh, Mahavishnu. In, so many universities are coming, but at the same time we're saying that uh, it's now within the womb of someone and he'll be giving birth. That person, the Baki, will give birth to him. So, because in this, in this world, we know that when someone takes birth, the person also will die. Birth and death that is the nature of this material world. You take birth and then you also, you also have to die. So which means if you are saying that if God is taking birth, which means he can also die. This is the, some of the representation here. Of course, Lord Krishna says in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, he said, Jama Kame Chame Devyan, even you take it to said that if one really understand the transcendental nature of my appearance and disappearance, then such a person can be free from the repetition of birth and death. The Lord says that in the Gita. But non-devotees, they can never understand this. Why, why they cannot, why they cannot understand this? Why? Because they are covered by materialistic energy. Hmm? So the in the message, Mayaya Sab Sambrita. That which means their intelligence is covered by, by material energy. So, because of this covering, people are unable to understand 
the, the nature of the Lord's appearance and disappearance. And why a person is covered by material energy? Why? Because they are Krishna by Mukha. Because they are not devotees of Krishna. Whereas Krishna's devotee, they are never covered by Maya. You know, the Lord said that uh, the, my devotees, they are under the shelter of my internal energy, internal potency is, is devotee. So the devotees, they don't have this, uh, this, this kind of uh, twisted understanding. Hmm? So the Lord said, uh, I mean, the uh, Sukhati Goswami, he said, Pashanti Nana Navi Pashito. He said that devotees, they cannot see these kind of things, this kind of uh, misunderstanding. Hmm? So in this verse, which we are reading today, the, the demigods who are saying, they, are, they use the repetition of the word twam, twam, just to emphasize points. Twam, 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 twam. They use, this, this word is, is repeatedly mentioned in this verse. Twam e kai basya sutta prasuti, twam sanidharam, twam anukrahas. That yes, you are the original source of everything. Twam huh? prasuti is that you are the original source of everything. And twam sanidharam, when everything is destroyed, still everything becomes conserved within you only. Everything becomes conserved within you when everything is destroyed. And then, Tom Anograha. Anograha means the, you know, you, the protector. You grant the favor for everyone's existence in this, in this material world. Tom Anograhas, that yes, the whole maintenance of this material world is actually depending on you only. You see, so Tuan Prasutis, Tuan Sanidharam, Tuan Anugrahas. These three things, Prasutis, Sanidharam, Anugrahas, the, you know, the, the original source, the, you know, the, 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 the maintenance, and then the conservation. So those, those three things, are, they say that the law, you are the basis of all these things. So now, according to the, uh, the commentary, of the the Acharyas. So they are saying that so when the 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 demigods when they are making this prayer to the Lord that oh you are the controller, you are the maintenance, you are the destroyer of everything. So the Lord is saying that oh Brahma that it is known that you Brahma you know Shivaji the, you know, the Brahma um, uh, Shiva. So, this is what they are doing. You know, you Brahma, you are the creator. You know, Vishnu is the maintainer. And Shiva, Shiva is the destroyer. So, why are you attributing all these things to me? Why are you attributing this, uh, this, uh, this crea creation, the maintenance and the destruction? Why are you attributing all these things to me? This is what the Lord, this is the implication that the Lord is saying to, to, to Lord Brahma. So, the, the, uh, uh, so the, the reply is that because the, those whose knowledge that is not covered, they cannot see the Lord in his uh, many, many full, in his uh, multi manifestations. Because the Lord he has unlimited manifestations. So those who are non-devotees, they cannot see that the law can be present in many, many can be present in many, many different, different ways. So when they see a creator, when they see a maintainer, when they see a, a destroyer, they say that this, are, this must be the different, different persons. They don't attribute that to the original source, to the original supreme Lord, and that's why. Many, many uh, materialist people, they worship different, different demigods. They worship different, 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 different demigods for, for the fulfillment of their particular, you know, desires. Because living entities in this material world, they have unlimited desires for the enjoyment of this material world. 
So because they have many, many desires for the enjoyment of this material world, so they know that, yes, a particular demigod is, you know, if I worship this demigod, this demigod will satisfy my particular, you know, desire. Just, just, as, just as it's mentioned that if one wants to become rich, once you worship, uh, you know, the Kuvera, if one wants a good progeny, you know, you find different, different demigods that one is supposed to be worshipped. If one wants a beautiful wife, one should worship woman, the wife of Lord Shiva. So like that. So people, they will worship different, different, you know, demigods for the fulfillment of material desires. But as the proper quoted the verse here, you know, he said uh, from the Bhagavad Gita, where by location telling Arjun, he said that, Ye 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 pian ye devata bhakta, ye jante shoda yam bitaha, te pimam eva conte ya, ye jante avidi pova kan, that those who have a diverted intelligence, hmm? ye pi, aye dev, those who worship, those who, uh, you know, intelligent is not. It's not correct. So they don't understand that yeah, these, they make these other demigods that by, by which they are, they are uh, making the offering to, all these demigods, they are, not on, they are not independent of the fulfillment of any particular desires because they will only fulfill someone's particular desires only after getting, getting the sanction from the Lord. It's just like in the material world, you have a government minister. So the government minister may have uh, many, many projects. Yeah, anybody may approach a minister for a particular project, but, un but unless the minister get a sanction from the central authority, you know, those things will not manifest. The minister cannot do anything. So the sanction from the central authority must be there. So similarly also, unless there is sanction from the Supreme Lord, from the original source, the demigods, they cannot fulfill the, the desires. But the, those who are called avidi povakam, whose knowledge is distorted, they don't have the real understanding, so they think that this particular demigod is the one who is uh, fulfilling my particular desires. So therefore, they don't divert, they don't put their attention on worshiping the Supreme Lord. So they don't understand that yes, the Lord is there and he manifests himself in a different, different way. That yes, the Lord is, is, is a person, is everything, is, is, is a source of everything. So like proper uh, quoted prominently, uh, prominently here, that yes, uh, Sava Kalam Idam Brahma, that yes, everything is one, everything is coming from him only. Is the source of everything. Now, very interesting point thing that Sla Prabhupada mentioned here in the purport about how sometimes uh, when someone is rendering devotional service to Krishna, sometimes one becomes distressed. Distress is there in the life of devotees also. It's not that just because you're a devotee, you no longer have any problems. No, the problem will always be there, especially when you're in the material world. Even though, yes, you are rendering, you are rendering back to still the problem is there. But how does the devotee see, see the distress that is coming to him? He sees this, this distress as a manifestation of the Supreme Lord. Because the devotee knows that, yes, because it's in this, in this material world, by which it's not supposed to be there, so in order to purify him, the Lord gave him so many, many distress. And the more a devotee can tolerate all this distress, the more advancement he can make. Actually, devotees, they actually welcome, they welcome distress, they welcome problems. Just like Queen Kunti, she was praying to Lord Krishna. She was praying that our, my dear Lord, you know, you have, you have saved us from so many, many different calamities, from being poisoned, from uh, being born in the, in, the, in, the, in the house of luck, you know. So many, many problems that the Pandavas have. But by concluding, she's praying that now all this problem is solved 
All these problems are gone. Now we have a bigger problem because when we have this problem, anytime we call upon you, you appear before us. Just like when Draupadi, when she was being uh, disrobed, when she was being disrobed, the moment she called upon Krishna, hey Govinda, like that, immediately Krishna appeared in the form of unlimited service to give her protection. So Kukundi is saying that uh, whenever we call upon you, you immediately appear before us. But now that our problem is over, because the Pandavas, they got their kingdom back. So everything seems to be nice now. Now this is our bigger problem because now it will be difficult for us to see you. So therefore, my dear Lord Krishna, my dear Krishna, please give us trouble, give us problems. Because the more we have these problems, distress, calamity, the more we'll be able to think upon you. And when someone, when one think about, upon Krishna, there'll be no birth and death. Because the more you think of Krishna, the more, you know, the, the more Krishna, Krishna conscious you become. And when you are Krishna conscious, there is no birth and death. You, you conquer, you traverse the ocean of material energy. You, tra you, you cross over the, you know, the materialistic uh, 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 you know, energy. So devotees, they, they will look for every opportunity because they don't want to be comfortable within this material world. Because we cannot be comfortable with this material world. This material world is always a source of misery. It's always a source of pain. So why do you want to be comfortable within the material world? So a devotee will look for every situation just, just to, be, uh, to be uncomfortable here. Like Lord Krishna, I mean, I mean Sri Prabhupada will, will often quote this verse in the, in the Ten Canto Bhagavatam that when the law is merciful towards a devotee, the Lord takes away everything from that devotee. He takes away every, everything from that devotee, so that that devotee will start. Uh, be, that devotee will become useless in the society. Everyone will reject him. Societies, family member, friends, they will all reject him because they will see that oh, this person has become useless. And then, what a devotee have left? Only Krishna's lotus feet. So therefore, the Lord said, "When I become pleased upon my devotees." I remove everything from, from him. Hmm? I remove everything from him when I become pleased with my devotees. Hmm? So the, the demigods, they are praying that, that yes, you are the, the, uh, the source of everything. The prosperity, you are the source. You are the maintenance and you are the destroyer. You know, because when everything is destroyed, everything comes upon you. Those who do not have this understanding, so they think that uh, these are simply different, different uh, entities, but they don't know that uh, this is actually you. This is actually you, you know, you know uh, uh, our dear Lord. Because why does the Lord have to manifest himself differently? He manifests himself differently because uh, the, the, there are varieties of devotees. There are all kinds of devotees. So many, but every devotee has got uh, different, different in object of meditation. Because there are many, many forms of the Lord. And the Lord manifests himself to a particular devotee according to the bhav that that devotee you know, has. According to the bhav of a particular devotee, the Lord manifests himself you know, differently. But even though it's the same person, just like we have the Lord's form as you know, in Ramachandra, as Nishingadev, you know, so many, many forms are there. Just like uh, Anumaji, you know, is a devotee of Lord Ram. And there is nothing that will take him away from that worship of Lord Ram. Hmm? Like, like, like Anumaji uh, said, he said, Sri Nante, Janaki Nante, Chabeda, Paramatmane. He said that, that yes, Sri means Narayan, uh, Janakinath means Ramchandra, even though they are the same person, but still, you know, my, my worshipable Lord is, uh, is Janakinath, is the Lord Ramachandra, he's my worshipable Lord. There's one particular pastime when uh, the Lord was in Dwaka, 
And he had sent uh, Garuda to go and bring Anuma to him in Dwaka. So, that time, uh, Anuma was uh, very, very old. It just was, because Anuma has been there for a you know, few million years. Since the time of Lord Machanda, a few mil million years ago. So, the Lord factors, this is so, which means a period of, so Anuma is very, very old, very old person. So, Garuda, he went to Anuma and said that, uh, the Lord wants to see you in Dwaka. So let's go, you know, get on my back. And uh, Garuda said, I will carry you and let's go to Dwaka because the Lord wants to see you. So Anuma said, well, you know, I'm very, very tired, you know. You know, I'm a very old man. How can I, you know, I'm too tired. I'm very sluggish. I cannot, I cannot go, you know, I'm too tired, you know. So Garuda, of course, was very surprised that uh, well, Krishna wants to see you and you are saying that you cannot go. You are very, very tired. How is that? So the... Um, then Garuda went back to Dwaka and said that to well, Anuma said that he's too tired, he's too, he's too old, he cannot come and see you. So the Lord then said, okay, you go back and tell him that Ramachandra wants to see him. That Ram wants to see him. So Anuma, uh, Garuda, he went back to uh, Anuma and tell him that way, well, Lord Ram wants to see you. So just before, just before even Garuda completed his sentence, Anuma immediately jumped up. Oh, okay, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Immediately jump up. My Lord wants to see me. Immediately jump up. Because that is his object of meditation, Lord Machandra. You know, you know, in the, we have many pastimes are there in the little of Chitama Prabhu, when one time, the Lord told uh, Murari Gupta that, uh, you know, I've come, I've, I've come um, to get everyone to chant the holy name of Krishna. This is my purpose, this is the purpose of his avatar to, to, to inaugurate the Nam Sankirtan, the chanting of Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. So the Lord told Anima that, yes, you must chant Krishna's name, you know. So Murari Gupta, you know, is a dear devotee of Lord Chaitanya Prabhu, very dear devotee. But his worshipable Lord is Lord Ramachandra, you know. So he told uh, Murari Gupta that uh, he should chant Krishna's name. So Murari Gupta, he meditated on this, on this order of the law all night long. So the next morning, he went to the Lord, Jitama Prabhu, with a knife. He said, my dear Lord, Allow me to die before you because you have given me, give me an order to chant Krishna's name, but I'm unable to do so because I have sold my head onto the lotus feet of Raghunath. So now I'm unable to fulfill your order because I cannot give up the chanting of my Lord's, you know, Lord Ramachandra's name. So therefore, allow me, you know, to die. Allow me to give up my body. So and of course, Chitamaya Prabhu was very, very happy. He simply embraced Murari Gupta. So, you are very, you are very dear servant of, you know, you are very dear servant of uh, Lord Ramachandra. And one, one statement that the Lord said, he said that a glory is that servant who does not give up the, the, uh, the, the lotus feet of his master. He said, glory is that servant and also, glory is that Lord who does not uh, forsake his servant. So both are glory, which means the Lord will not give up you know, his servant, nor will the devotee give up his master. So, so that is the answer so that even though it's the same person, the same personality, but he manifests himself you know, in, ma in a manifold, you know, manifestation is there. Different, different manifestations of the Lord is there many, many forms, but again, it's the same person, the same original person. Just like the um, um, Srila Rupa Goswami, he had wrote a very beautiful book called uh, Lagu Bhagavatamrita. And in this book, Srila Rupa Goswami did talk about all different, different manifestations of the law, all different, different incarnations, you know, and it presented many, many different, different arguments about how sometimes, because when one studied the characteristics of all these different, different uh, uh, manifestations, 
different different avatars or different different expansions like Narayan, Kuma, Nishingadev. If you want to study their different different characteristics, one can assume that yes, these are the this is the Supreme Lord. For instance, if one study the the characteristics of uh, Narayan, one will say that actually Narayan, Narayan is the Supreme and Krishna is coming from Narayan. But the argument is actually Krishna is the origin of Narayan. But when you study all the characteristics, say, oh, because I have to run from Narayan, come all the different, different, uh, different, different expansions like Mahavishnu, Kirudacha Vishnu. They all come from Narayan. So how can we say that uh, Krishna is the source of Narayan? How can we say that? But at the same time, Lakshmi Devi, who is the you know, wife of Narayan, who is always at the feet of Narayan, Lakshmi Devi became attracted to, to be with Krishna. She became attracted to what she wanted to be in Raslila. So what did she do? She performed austerities for hundreds of years. For a long period of time, she performed austerity so that she can be, so she can be able to dance with Krishna and with the, with the gopis. So when she was performing austerity, austerity for a long period of time, then Lord Krishna appeared before her that what do you want? Why are you meditating? Why are you performing all this austerity? She said, because I want to be in the Raslila with you. That's why. So, the Lord said, well, this is impossible. After all, you know, you have your particular abhiman, you have your particular, you know, the ashwarya, the, the, you know, that, that mood you have. It's impossible for you to be in the Raslila. And then, of course, then uh, Lashmi, she requested that, okay, let me be on your chest. Let me be seated on your, on your chest. So the Lord agreed and allow her to be a, like a, a, a golden line on his chest. So, so, you know, so, so, so this is there. So the, the, the mentality of devotees is different from the, uh, from the non-devotees. So the verse which we are reading, whereby it's mentioned that uh, the, um, you know, Pashanti nana na that the the, the non devotees they see the difference from different different manifestations of the Lord, but the devotees do not see such difference. The devotees don't see such difference that oh uh, Vishnu, Brahmaji, Shivaji, they are diff you know they are just different different uh, personalities. No, no, devotees do not see they don't see such. <laughs> So that's when in their prayer, the demigod, they are having this, they have this reputation of Trump that you, 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 you are the destroyer, you are the origin, you are the maintenance. So this is a very, very clear call that you, you, this Trump, this Trump, this, this Trump word is there. And our chayas, they giving the commentaries accordingly, how we can have this uh, focused understanding. So therefore, the devotees, so they meditate on the Lord. Just like, for, ex for example, this is the month of Damodara, the month where we worship Lord Damodara because he was running away from his, mo his mother, and then his mother caught him and he bind him in the, in, in the he bind him with Uluka, with the uh, uh, granny mother. But Satyavrata Muni, what did he say? When he, when, he began his, when, he, when he saw this pastime, he said, Nama Miswaram Sachit Ananda Ropam, that I offer my business to you, O the Supreme Controller. Nama Miswaram Sachit Ananda Ropam, Lasati Kundalam Gokuli Brajamana. So, even though, yes, Supreme Controller, but now he's, he's now manifests himself, he's in Gokul, and he's, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, He's running, he's running away from his, from his mother, and his mother was ru running after him, and uh, now he has been caught by his mother, and now his mother is now binding him to the Uluka, to the, to the granny mother. So it's very amazing pastime, but when uh, Satyavata Muni, when he making his prayer, he said, I offer my obeisances to the Supreme Controller. E Kale Ishwara. As for the that uh, there's only one controller, 
Ekal Ishwar Krishna, are a servant preacher. Everyone has their servant. In the chapter um, chapter nine of the Chaitanya Chaitamita, so like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is describing of how, how everyone will consider themselves as the Lord's servant. Bhritya means servant. You know, Vishnu sees himself as a servant. Brahmaji, Shivaji, they all see themselves as servant. All manifestations of the law, they all see themselves as servant of that supreme controller. Lord Balaram, he is there to make all the pastime possible for Lord Krishna. Hmm? He sees himself as servant, you know. So therefore I say, Nama Mishwaram, Sachit Ananda Rupam, that my obeisance is unto that supreme controller who is the, you know, form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. And then, of course, is the performer, is the performer of so many, many, many wonderful pastimes. Huh? So, you know, of course, our time is gone. This is a very, very beautiful sloka and uh, very, very beautifully um, commented upon by Sri Prabhupada and our chayas. So we should read this again and again. We should meditate on it. And we should start to, to understand what's been expressed. And the last line of this text is, which La Papa wrote, that uh, it, it said that uh, uh, once you concentrate upon and worship the Supreme Lord, Mom Ekam Sanam Braja, this should be the guiding principle of one's life. This is very, very important last line. This should be the guiding principle of one's life. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm going to stop here. If there's any question or comments, you can please. Any question? Yeah. Can you somebody give the microphone? Hare Krishna. It's not working? Is there, is there a plug there? Okay. We don't see distress as like. We don't welcome so many distress like. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, uh, yes, we don't welcome distress because of our attachment to the material world, because of our attachment to this material body. So therefore, it's difficult for us to, to see distress as a way for us to, to become free from the, you know, from this material world, um, actually, you know, to, to get out and become attached to the ocean service. Because of, mainly because of attachment. We see distress more as a punishment. That, oh, why am I being punished this way? You know, what kind of karma am I having? So we don't see distress as a source of purification. But the pure devotees, they see distress as a means of purifying themselves. Because when you are purified, then you'll be attached to the lotus feet of the Lord. You'll be attached to Krishna. Because the laws do not want us to be attached to any aspect of this material world. Because this material world is nothing but illusion, illusion basically. So the law wants to free us from all this illusion. So therefore, it gives us all kinds of distress so that we can see the reality of this material world. You can see the reality and not be, and just, you know, not, you know, get out of it, get out of it. We're not supposed to be here. So for any serious devotees, they pray for distress, they pray for calamity. Okay. Any other points? Question? Want to ask a question at the back here? Yeah. yeah. Krishna. Thank you.
Yeah, I mean, like in the morning, we sing this prayer in the morning. The Vibhavari the, says, uh, look up the, the prayer that we sing in the morning, the Dari Mangalati. And the, the fourth, the fourth uh, verse, we say that Revati, uh, uh, what is that? Ravana Tankara Makana Taskara, Gopi Jana Vastrahari, you know, Brajiri Rakala Gopa Vrindavana. Chitari Bansi Dari. That supposedly the Krishna, who is called Makancho, the butter thief, uh, and he's called uh, the stealer, Gopi Vashtrahan, he, take he takes away the, uh, you know, the clothes of the Gopi. But what is Krishna is taking? He said, Krishna, uh, uh, Chitahari, stolen the heart of the Gopis. So which means, Krishna, whatever is, it, it, it stole, he left everything behind. He put them there, he put them, but he took away the heart. So by taking away the heart, you know, what else do you have left? So, the, so we should pray for Krishna to take our heart, not for Maya to take our heart, you know. That's what we should pray for. So as long as we are attach ourselves to all those in this material world, then Krishna will not take your heart. Yeah, that's Maya, Maya be domain. So, so the real devotees, that's what they pray for. And that's why devotees, they, they give up any, they renounce this material world. Just like a stool, you know. Just like the six Goswamis, you know, they were like, they are called the Mandala Party, they own everything. They were rich, rich people, but they give it all up. Just like, uh, you know, you go to the bathroom, you go past. So when you come out of the bathroom, you don't look back. You don't say, oh, how nice this bathroom is. You just finish your pass and then you get out. Hmm? So, you know, the Goswamis, when they left this material world, when they renounced everything, and they came to Vindavan, they became penniless. They did not look back. In this way, they always crying, shout, you know, all over the forest of Vindavan. Hey Radhe, hey Bhaja Devi Ke, Nanda Suno, where are you Krishna? Where's, you know, the, you know, that's what they are crying throughout the forest of Vrindavan. Having given up everything related to this material world. So basically we have to come to that platform. And as I said before, as long as we are comfortable with our situation, this material world, then such situation will not arise. So we have to come to the point of being totally discomfort with any aspect of this material world. If you really want to release bhakti ras, you know, if you really want to release bhakti, then we have to, you know, turn our back towards material world. This, that's what it means. But just know that it's not that uh, we cannot try to enjoy the material world and at the same time want to be devotee. It's like trying to cross the river and then you put your hand, your leg in two boats, you want to cross the river, you know, you're going to be frustrated, you know. So similarly also, we should not hanker for those things that will make everything nice for us in the material world. But we should hunger for those things that will increase our detachment. What is it? Okay. Our detachment and attachment to the, to, to, the, to the lost lotus feet. Okay. Anyway, so thank you very much then for appreciate. Grant to us from Bhagavatam Ki. Sila Pupara Ki. Go up in